So you bought your fancy high-end ultra-wide monitor with an IPS panel, 10-bit color, adaptive refresh, and a, an attachment for keeping your drinks cool. Maybe you've even used some calibration tools to get things looking just right. But then, when you have a friend over for Counter-Strike, he starts complaining that the colors seem a little off. How could that be? Well, considering that people vary wildly in everything from musical ability to whether or not we find spray cheese appealing, it might not be surprising to learn that people perceive colors differently as well. And I'm not talking about really obvious things like color blindness or needing glasses because everything's blurry without them. What I'm referring to instead is variations between people's cone cells, the things in your eyes that allow you to see color. You have three normal types of cones, each sensitive to a different range of wavelengths. One kind for colors in the red to yellow range, one for greens, and one for blues and violets. This arrangement of cones actually inspired the RGB color model that you see in monitors, TVs, and basically every gaming keyboard for the past couple of years. Since red, green, and blue match up well to the three kinds of cones we have, RGB ends up being a great base for reproducing lots of different colors. But because some people have small variations in cone composition, our sensitivity to these different colors of light will also vary greatly from person to person. So to get an idea of how a regular person sees color, a test was conducted back in 1931 on a handful of people, and the results were averaged and have been used as a baseline for much of color science ever since, including the way that we think about display design. So modern flat panel displays will give off different amounts of energy in the red, green, and blue parts of the visual spectrum, but they don't exactly match the proportions that were found in the 1931 experiment. To complicate things further, monitors can differ wildly from each other in how vividly they show each of these colors, which you can see clearly on spectral power graphs, which show very different amounts of energy per color between displays. And even though modern screens have better picture quality and lower power consumption than old bulky CRTs, those old monitors were actually better at producing uniform colors. Flat panel displays have narrower band color, meaning that they give off purer reds, greens, and blues, which show up as pointier bumps on a graph like this. But because of the variations in people's cone cells that I mentioned earlier, this makes it easier to pick up on small variations between monitors, and also easier for two different people to be looking at the same monitor yet see different colors, a phenomenon called metameric failure. So when you put this together with other factors, such as different color spaces and backlight types, which you can learn about in these videos, it's really no wonder that different people notice such drastic discrepancies in current generation displays. One solution, which is already being used in higher end laser projectors, is to use two different shades of red, green, and blue as your primaries, giving you six base colors instead of three. This helps spread out the color energy and make things look more uniform. But differences between our eyes will continue to make this a tough problem to tackle for some time. Until then, though, we can continue to enjoy our arguments about whether mulberry magenta and passion pink are actually the same color. Thanks once again, by the way, to our friend Tyler from Spectracal for helping us out with this video. He is like a color wizard of some sort. Speaking of wizardry, are you a wizard with accounting? Do you enjoy dealing with the books of your small business? Yeah, I, I, I didn't think so. So you might want to check out FreshBooks. FreshBooks is on a mission to make freelancers and small business owners less stressed and more organized through their easy to use online tool that lets you keep track of your accounting, craft and send professional invoices, and even get paid all in one place. You can track your hours, you can submit your invoices to clients, you can see that they've read them, and then you can take not only payments, but you can even accept things like deposits through their platform 
form so the work is paid for on your schedule. They've even got a tool that lets you manage expense reports, letting you take a picture of your receipts and then it pretty much handles the rest. Getting started in FreshBooks is extremely simple, even if you're not a numbers person, and you can try it free for 30 days by going to freshbooks.com forward slash techquickie and entering techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. Go check it out. It's linked down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you want to check out our other channels, boom, right over there. Leave a comment below with video suggestions for future Vast as Possibles and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos just like this one.